and welcome to Lions on Design. I'm Debbie Lyons. I am here today with Susan Lane. I'm actually in my own kitchen. Um, we're going to be talking about kitchens and kitchen redos. Hilton Head Kitchen and Bath is the place to go for that. And Susan is a great designer. I know Kelly's on a job right now. That's right. And you and I have been talking um, when we come over and eat dinner and have a glass of wine or do whatever we do, we talk about kitchen design all the time. And this is an old house that was built in 1958, Susan. And as you know, I've wanted to do something with a kitchen for a long time. That's right. We reinvented this kitchen many, many times. That's a, yeah. We really wine. yes, we really it's have way reinvented it. it. But I'm seeing more and more of my clients, and I know you're seeing it a lot now, with people rather than building brand new houses, they're taking a look at what they have existing and saying, okay. If I'm going to put money into it, what can I do to really update the look of my kitchen, make it a bit more functional, and um, spend my money wisely so I don't have to do this again for another 20 years? That's right. Yeah. Your objective that you have for the property certainly is always um, very, very important. Yes. Obviously, you've been here for a while and you plan to be here for a long, long time. Exactly. Maybe kind forever. of a family house. Exactly. Exactly. Uh -huh. It is. It's a comfortable family, lived in house. Uh, so you want to make the right choices in terms of buying good enough grade stuff that you're not going to have to replace it if you okay. want. Uh, clearly, we need to redesign the layout to make it fit uh, the way your family operates here. Correct. You've worked it for many, many years, so of course you know what works about it and what doesn't work about it, and that's always a big benefit, also. Well, you know what I'm thinking, and I'll I'll tell you what I'm thinking. Then you can you can I mean you're the kitchen designer, but I think the thing that bugs me the most about my kitchen is there's only one way to get into it, and that's right here. I would love you know to be able to kind of walk around or maybe have an island out here mm -hmm. or islands are always a popular option yeah, what are you particularly seeing? because uh, you have the peninsula set up here and I know that when people congregate at your house this is the central area uh, if you separate that a little bit with an island you still get that um, significant amount of countertop space where you can entertain you can also use it as a workspace uh, if it's adjacent from the kitchen mm -hmm. certainly uh, and if you separate it, then you do have a traffic flow that can go all the way around it, which is important when you get a lot of people in here trying to help cook or help clean up, hopefully. Are you looking, yeah, really, are you looking at peninsulas, or I'm sorry, not peninsulas, peninsulas but are you looking at islands now that are um, functional? Should I drop a sink in it? Should I just keep a cooktop in it? Should I not do anything? Should I just keep it as a workspace? <clears throat> In the event we keep the existing plan much as it is, and right now it works sort of as a galley kitchen on this particular wall, and okay. then just wraps a little bit. If we keep that and we don't have the option of busting out this wall, then you might want to keep your island just as a workspace because you're probably going to need it. Okay. In the event we get to lose that wall and expand into that area, then I would definitely want to see you have a little bar sink or a prep sink or a vegetable sink or something in there. Because I want one of those cool color sinks that are like, have you guys seen them? They're like the big, long, long skinny yes, trough that kind of trough. flows. That, they're really functional because it allows a couple different people to stand there and prep or help you cook or mix a drink or whatever the case may be. So if you have the space and you can incorporate two sinks, even though one of them might be small, absolutely great idea because okay. today we do have more than one cook in the kitchen typically. I mean we really do mm -hmm. and again I just want people to be able to walk the circle since most of the entertaining that we do is very um, informal. Right. The other thing is my refrigerator completely bugs me and I think this is a designer thing most people would never even notice it but it's not flush right it's not flat with my cabinetry we do uh, more times than not these days a counter depth refrigerator which gets that bulk uh, back a little bit more towards flush in line with the cabinetry mm -hmm. they get a little higher so that upper cabinet usually becomes a little uh, a little less high that's mm -hmm. simply because with the counter depth they are making the refrigerators higher because you still need the cubic uh, space in there so okay. they get higher and more narrow obviously you don't want anything too invasive there uh, if we leave the refrigerator in that spot, you certainly don't want anything that's encroaching on this beautiful view. view that you okay. have out there. Uh, we would want to situate an island too to be able to take advantage and maximize that view without cutting any of it off. What's important for us to figure out? This is this is us, her. 
for you and Kelly to figure out when you are configuring any kitchen, is it is placement of refrigerator, range, are those important? It used to be the triangle, is that It used to be the triangle and you still kind of keep that concept in mind, absolutely. But these days it's going to be a quadrangle or much larger because okay. we have a lot more appliances these days. Uh, it used to be you had your refrigerator, you had your sink and you had your, your stove, which was probably a one piece slide in with the oven. These days we're more inclined to have a separate cooktop and an oven stack. Okay. The microwave may very well be much more important than the oven placement itself because it's getting a lot more use. And the fact that you have two or three cooks in the kitchen at one time. So you do have to uh, keep in mind the feel for how you're using it and okay. how are all, all the players going to interact. And I think that's something that, that you were really um, adamant about when we started talking about even doing the show. I, you know, I said, what can I do to be informed? What do you need to know from me? And really when a client comes in, what are some of the things that you want to know about that client when they're getting ready to do a redo? Probably the most important is going to be their lifestyle. Okay. How they're going to work that kitchen. As you well know from being a decorator here for years, there's a lot of people that are never going to use that kitchen. So it can be just the showcase. Right. And that's absolutely fine. My and that's friend gorgeous. Carol, I have to have a kitchen for resale. Exactly. Right? And and you do. Uh -huh. Very, very important. Mm -hmm. uh, that, you know, that's one function. Uh, obviously, yours needs to be much more workable and yes. has to service a lot of different needs. And obviously, then the second uh, qualifier is your budget. Okay. You know, that's going to dictate to a certain degree how much cabinetry you can afford to put in there, how expensive appliances you're going to get, what mm -hmm. kind of countertop options you're going to consider. So lifestyle and budget are your two biggies and then from there your world is your oyster. Uh, all things are possible. Let me ask you about um, cabinet, just actual cabinets. What about innards? Can you help me with the inside? or th What's kind of new? Are there a lot of interesting component pieces that I can also yeah, add? Yeah, there are a lot of different organizer systems and things that make what uh, little space you have in the event you do have a confined area much more functional for you. All right, you are going to bring me a couple of just fun things. Of course, that's what we do. Now that we've talked the nuts and bolts, let's get to the cool stuff. Well, knowing that you are certainly uh, not afraid of color. No. Not love color. color at all. Love color. Uh, in fact, you've got a bright palette. And, yeah, uh, I really love anything all anything too boring in here, you're simply not going to be happy with it and it's not going to work with the rest of your house. I love uh, these sort of... Anybody coming up to your front step can get the visual clue that there's a lot yeah. of eclecticism going on here. Uh, obviously, you've got painted cabinetry now, so you're used to seeing color in here. Doesn't mean you have to go with the color at all. Probably our most popular uh, option currently is uh, a painted white shaker. Oh, see, I, or I know you love the I love beadboard. Beadboard works very, very well in um, any kind of a low country type of, it can have a cottage or a coastal see, chic I kind like, of feeling. I like this. And I know you love that, and here's an option, a uh, similar beadboard with a glaze on it, but with some color. Well, you know what's funny, Our, this, this cabinetry is, was just a flat piece. We took, um, keys and pounded keys in here and then I had all three of my kids come with black magic markers ah. and make the little wormy holes and then we just did a glaze on them and then we took caulking you, you remember this we took caulking mm -hmm. and caulked the walls and all the kids could write sayings and then we painted See, that's um, it was great. That's but a beautiful. It's a beautiful effect, and I'll make sure you take plenty of pictures of that before we completely right, give it a new palette. Right, because I'm sort of over that now because my kids are gone now, but so it's I'm ready to have some. And it's part of heritage, exactly. so you want to you want to make sure you don't lose that. But and, I'm ready to do. And your new do. kitchen will have a lot of personality too. I have no doubt. What do you think about black? Uh, a black island or something where I would do a contrast, do a beadboard and then a contrast. Yeah, most of the time these days when we're doing islands, we are doing them in a. Um, complementary or it's just completely contrasting uh, color. And in the event that the uh, blue color might scare you to do mm -hmm. everywhere, in the event resale was ever going to be an option and you didn't want to do too much of that, certainly you can blend uh, white, a basic white with just about anything and keep your color or maybe a really, really dark uh, wood tone for like the Like an espresso, island. something like, like that. Like an espresso, mm -hmm. Something that kind of uh, anchors the feeling of the room and also kind of goes away at the same time. Mm -hmm. That gives you a little bit more depth than you would otherwise have with 
uh, bright white cabinetry everywhere if you decided to do white. Are you seeing, what about for the backsplash, are you seeing um, a lot of the glass coming up the backsplash? Yes, absolutely. Are you seeing a lot of the little mosaic? Because I love these colors. Seeing a lot of the uh, subway tile format, both in the okay. typical 3x6, which has always been Wait, a standard. Wait, 3x6 is bigger, three right? 3x6 is almost brick size, okay. uh, or the smaller uh, size like this. And certainly, we're doing the 1x1s one everywhere. And you can combine a lot of those colors. And in the event that you want to have a big pop of color and you want to have that mm -hmm. big wow kitchen going on, but you don't want to commit to a deep color on cabinetry or on a countertop, uh, that's a way to really spice it up and jazz it up without doing anything really uh, committal long term. And I, I mean, this time goes by so quickly. We're already um, really through the segment. And I want to say that Hilton Head Kitchen and Bath, you are off of Cardinal Road on, on Hunter, Hunter Road. Five, Hunter. You've got to come if you, and check out the. Um, the showroom because you've got great things and I think that's what we're going to have to do right. is too many choices and I kind of want to funky it up and and but you have something for everyone and I think I Absolutely. really appreciate you coming and taking time on my house hopefully in the next year we'll be able to come back and see what we actually we actually we'll do, do. that would be a lot of fun we'll do that oh. I'll show you everything we have in the showroom except the brown cabinets because I know you'll never go for the brown no cabinets. but I love yours stay with us we're going to be right back on lines on design We are back here on Lines on Design. We're here with Andy Pitts from Lines Construction, and we are in the Lines Land Workshop, which is a rather frightening place to be unless you're prepared mentally and emotionally. Safety first. <laughs> so, yeah, all things good. Safety first. Um, we actually had fun talking about what we were going to do this segment, and one of the things we wanted to talk about was in this time of um, kind of hunkered down, it's important not to waste. Definitely not. Tell me about what you all did and what we're going to do. We finished working on a deck okay. for a client of ours Okay. using this beautiful wood, which is called Ipe. I've heard of it. What yeah. is it, like a teak or a? It is a wood from Brazil. Okay. And it's a very dense wood. Uh, bugs don't get in it and eat it. It doesn't really mind being out in the weather. That's why okay. people use it outdoors. I hear a lot of it on decks. Is that where you all use yes, it a lot? Okay. Yeah. And it's beautiful and you can uh, you can just leave it natural and it looks great after you know mm -hmm. years in the sun. Um, but when you have leftovers you don't want to throw them away. Exactly. So we have a few paintings here that a wonderful artist. Yes. Michelle Don Connix is, a, is an on. incredible artist and she's done a lot of work over the years that she's sold. She did these two pictures of Mahi for one of my design clients. And we were trying to figure out what to do and how to frame it and Andy was like, you know what, we've got this great leftover iPay. It's a shame to pitch it or do anything else with you it. Let's make some frames. Never throw this so we away. thought it'd be fun for you all to see exactly how we're gonna go about doing the frames and then we'll come back later and show these yeah. another, another day. Yeah, it's exciting. All right, so what are we doing? Okay, so basically uh, I've kind of got this as started. This is kind of a scrap piece, but it okay. was just to kind of get uh, you know, an idea of what this will look like when we're finished. Uh -huh. um, and it'll just be a, a really simple design. The corners will be mitered. And what does mitered mean? It's just a way of, of making the corner. This is a 45 degree angle. Okay. You know, and you put two of them together and you okay. get this nice uh, 90 degree thing happening here. Have so, you? Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Oh, well, I was just going to say, if you want to, we can go over here and make a cut exactly. and see what, we, well, see what we have. Before we do that, I, I do want to ask you, you've done a lot of building and cabinetry work and trim work for a long time now. Some work. I still enjoy it? Yeah, I love it. Are we going to... Uh, it's great. Are, I, I love going to work every day. See, that's a good yeah. thing. Are we going to be keeping this a wide frame? Or are we going to be doing a small frame? What do you? What do you, What this, is your recommendation? This is up in the air. This is whatever we want. Uh, we kind of have free reign. These are big pictures, though. They might look nice with a nice chunky, yeah, uh, something kind of hefty and solid. All right. I think. So we're going to make a cut on our miter saw. Okay, miter saw because we're going to do a mitered angle and, a mi and an angle. Oh my. I know. You just I said love that. that. I listened. All right, You're but tell best. them what it really is because I don't know. Uh, this is a miter saw that we use to cut all, you know, you can make a, a compound miter which is an angle and a bevel. Mm -hmm. uh, this will be just a straight up angle, a 45 angle cut. Okay. Um, 
And uh, one thing you'll probably notice is this wood, it, it really is very hard and very dense and it's going to take a little while even for this, this big 12-inch uh, saw to cut all the way through it and it's important to cut nice and slow um, and it might even start smoking. It's not that the blade is dull, it's just that this stuff is really that hard. Cool. Um, all right. And then what are we going to do? Bring it over and kind of see how it's going to look? Yeah. All right. Let's do that. All oh, right. look at you with your... Oh, Always. tell me those are not cool safety glasses. Well, these are kind of a stylish variety of the safety glasses <gasps> that I have here. Uh, always. Uh, Always wear protective eyewear in the shop. Do, are you good about that? Yes. Yeah, you really yes. are, aren't you? All right. Okay, with that said, do you mind if I just step away from the danger? You no. can stand back there. You're, you're perfectly fine there. Really? I won't lose a finger or an eye or... No, you won't. It will be a little loud, though. Okay. All right, here la, we la, go. La, 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 la. Whoa, is this a professional, like, don't Whew. do this at home? Relieved that that Whoa. went well. That's amazing. Yeah. And that okay. is strictly for cutting angles? Uh, yeah, basically. All right, let's go. I want to take this over here. You can right. make nice square cuts with it as well. But I'm loving the idea of this chunky monkey kind of look. Oh, yeah. So let's see how that goes together. Oh, my God, you guys, look at this. And I thought we do could it, only Ted. get frames at Michael's. Isn't this heavy? <laughs> piece of wood is actually really heavy. I like it. Yeah. Now, are we going to keep it natural? Do we want to gloss it? Do you paint iPay, or is the beauty of iPay you I don't I think do you it? don't. Okay. <laughs> no, truthfully, you just don't. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, look at that beautiful grain there. and. Uh, so putting uh, rhinestone studs here, not so good. Well, if you want to be dazzling, I suppose you could. <laughs> It doesn't really. As much as I love uh, sparkles and shiny things there. That's you know. true, you do, but we're saying just say no to that too. Let's just say no to it for now. All right, all right. Now, what's and, the next? Uh, okay, what's Okay, so after you put this, this is just kind of a mock up of what it'll be. Okay. Um, so, we, if you like, I, you know, one thing that really makes this wood come alive is when you, uh, you put oil on it. Okay. Um, you might want to check with the artist about. You Greasing know. it up. Yeah, I don't. I don't know particularly if it, if the oil will uh, oh. leach into the paper or not, or maybe we'll just oil the top and and keep it off the paper. That's right. Of course, right. you'll that... do this before you set the the print into it. Could this ever be a kitchen counter? Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, this stuff is so hard. You know, some of this leftover that we had really was just sitting out in the. It was just getting banged up, and mm -hmm. you know, you can sand on it, and it's really you know. Some woods, you, you start sanding on it, and then you get these big divots in it if you're not careful. But not this on really this. isn't so much the case with with the iPad. I really like the contrasting. It's gonna be really, really pretty, pretty, pretty. So, All right, is this it? Yeah. Well, here's just a little scrap. Okay. And if you like. Whoa. Uh, whoa. Yeah. What? This is uh, a scrap that I use to make plugs for when we screw the uh, when we screw the two pieces together, or when you attach it down to like joists of the deck. Okay. Uh, we use these plugs made out of the same material, and it's just a really neat look. Of course, this is the plugs are already used, are used. but <laughs> this is what's left. Yeah, but still, this will be a great. Yeah. Can we show? What are we gonna do? Show how so this. So let's oil? just show yeah. how this uh, kind of comes alive when you use a little bit of this. I really like this. This oil on it. I, you know, it, it's funny. We just went in Lions Land and we were looking at kitchens for a kitchen redo. Yeah. I'm thinking an, an island top. Would that be cool? Let's do it. Do you think? No, do you really think it would be cool? It'd be a, you know, would it be a pain to maintain? No, no. I mean, when you do wood, natural wood, uh, with natural finish, <gasps> anytime, you know, there's a little bit of maintenance involved. But, I wish you know, I isn't there maintenance smell. involved when you paint stuff, too? So, I just love the, uh, the look of the wood. Uh, it changes. It shows off the grain. And it changes, Andy, the look of this amazingly. Yeah. So think about how nice that would be. Then um, will it, do, do you use a mat or what is this, teak oil? This is just teak oil. There's a lot of different products. I mean, this is a real basic thing to do. Now, do I, how many times oil. do I have to oil this to, to get it done? I'm gonna look at it. Can we look at it over here? Let's look at it over there. Because I just kind of want to see, what do you guys think? I mean, what is, 
We'll take we'll take some collars on the. Yeah, the we'll take line. some collars under. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, I can't decide. In my house, I don't know. What do you like? Well, you know, different pieces of this iPay show off different colors. You know, some of them are kind of yellowy. They have a little bit of yellow in them, a little uh -huh. orange. Uh -huh. I mean, it does darken up some, and this will be indoors. You know, if this was, if we were to use it outside, you might want to put that oil on like once, twice, maybe three times a year, even. I like the look of the oil. I am thinking, and I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. I'm liking the gray undertones. Again, with yeah. that oil on it, I can see the kind of the golden undertones coming through. Yeah, yeah. So when you make this, how will you screw these little guys together? I would be... Uh, will you glue it? Uh, yes, we are gonna glue this together. You can use uh, what's known as a, a biscuit joint, which is a little insert on okay. either side okay. of this, and that holds the glue and holds this together, as well as maybe getting one or two screws in it through the side. And then... And that would be something that we would use the plugs to, to cover up the screw head. Will you recommend glass on this? Will you put it on a piece of foam core? How do you... Now, as far as the matting... <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. Coach I can build your frame. Right. <laughs> yeah, but don't I think, yeah, I think it should be behind glass, you know, because it's such a nice piece, and, uh, you know, let's just... I really like it. Yeah. You guys are doing some of the I pay on a boat, too? Yes, Do we, we get are. to walk out and see what you guys do I don't do know. There? Can we yeah, walk out we and take a look out? at it? Let's go take a look. All right. See how you use the I pay on the boat. Okay, I love the iPay that we did the frame out of. Right. But you had enough after this deck to kind of fancy up this homemade boat. Yeah, we got lucky and uh, we were able to use some of the long, we had just a few long pieces enough to do this with, so we were really excited. Uh, and it just makes a nice wide rail to kind of sit, sit your on, do your on. fishing yeah, off exactly. of. Yeah, you know? exactly. I like the look a lot. I, yeah. One of the things, now, are these the... Um, these are the plugs that, okay, we, that we were talking about before. Talking about before gives it a very finished look, a very custom look. And I think Mike started this. Mike has built this boat in about four years, I think, and now it just had its first yeah. real redo uh, and renovation. Right, the first uh, total overhaul. Exactly. So we're restoring it back to the the, the first year, exactly. the look of the first year. I already told Andy and Mike they're going to do the first 20 maiden voyages and then we'll try it out. Thank well, you. I really appreciate Yeah, I tell you what, it'll be fun to have you back on and we'll take a look at the frame when you come back. That'll be great. And lots of things going on that they're going to be building and doing some built-ins that you're going to be doing we thought would be fun to yeah. take a look at too. We're excited to be working. There, yeah, it feels good, <laughs> doesn't it? Thank you all for joining us here on Lines on Design. Have a great day. Bye-bye now.